Today my mom disowned me as her child. My parents and relatives, pretty much everyone in my community is Muslim and women wears hijab. I am 20 years old but when I first started to wear hijab I was only 12 years old and I just wanted my family to be proud of me and relatives to love me so I made a bad choice for myself. I immediately regretted it but scared of my community's response so I tried to pretend like it was nothing. To be fair, it always made me feel ugly and unworthy. I never had a real chance to walk at the street with my hair on my shoulders and feel that freedom. I'm also at the edge of regretting my religion so as you can see things are very f docked up for me right now. I always told my mom and big sister, I would like to not wear hijab, but they ignored what I said for years. I always accepted how I live and dream dreamed of someone who can see through me, love me besides everything. To be honest, it was a childish thought and I realized that I live for myself and even though I wear hijab it doesn't change my inner self. Last two months, I decided that I am gonna tell my mom first and tell her that I want to feel both a day I fucked up and be able to wear pretty clothes. It was a very hard thing for me to do. I lost 7 kilograms in 2 weeks for just preparing to say it. When I told her, she basically just manipulated me and said, you wanted to look bow today I fucked up for men at your college. It really broke my heart that I can't even express it within the words. I would be sl.t, as she says, if I wanted to, hijab wouldn't stop me. 2 or 3 weeks passed and my mom literally ignored what I've said and pretend like it didn't even happen. Today I just told my sister and my mom heard it too. My sister didn't approve and told my problems isn't about hijab, taking it off will not change anything about my mental state. I also want to say, I hate IT when they speak like they know what I really think and feel. I hold myself for 3 weeks after that conversation with mom but I snapped at my sister today and told I will do it, no matter what. Mom literally lost her mind and started yelling like a freak. She called me squint, asked God what was her sin to get such a bad daughter. Then she told me she will not make it happen. When I yelled her to leave my room, she yelled from the corridor and said, she will finish her college, find a job then will f.ck off from our house and will never see me again. So yeah, it basically it. She literally disowned me because of it. I understand her but clearly it didn't help the first time when we spoke and she chose to ignore my feelings. I don't know what else to say. Also I don't want you guys to question my motives because I really don't have energy to explain myself and how I feel throughout all of these years. I feel too tired and dead inside to do anything at all. Edit. Thank you for the award. I really hope my mom come around and we can see eye to eye. Her choice will not matter, I decided what I am about to do but just wishing for her to accept it easily. Edit 2, I tried to read every comment I can but I still have school HWS and exams and wasn't able to reply everyone. You guys mostly asked where I am from. Turkey. In Turkey we have a lot of different people but some of the parts live their lives in the edge like me and my religious family. In our culture, we usually don't leave our parents house till we get married. Can I change this? Sure, why not? But I need to earn my own money first and I still have three years in college to finish. My lessons are too much and I can't find any spare time to work, also right now corona sucks and still colleges didn't open yet. I love my family, I understand why they feel that way but it doesn't help the matter. So please don't send hate to them in the comments. I think the main issue with my mom is that she is too controlling. I still have its impacts on my life to this day. I really have no social abilities since my mom protect me way too much. I am trying to chang its impacts on my life. They still don't understand me and think I don't have to take off the hijab to be happy. The main thing they don't want to understand is that it doesn't show who I am. All of my friends know my situation right now and they stand behind me. Gratefully I was able to make friends who are like me but I don't think I can find my soulmate like this, it is impossible. I just want to be myself. You comments helped me a lot and made me realize that I didn't do anything wrong. Thank you so much for your supports. There is tons of messages in my mailbox too and I can't show how grateful I am. Thank you so much, I hope I will get through this with the strength I got from bunch of kind strangers. I, 22F, was also disowned by my, now estranged, Muslim family. I wanted to say that I am sorry from the bottom of my heart for that. It feels like absolute shit to not have your mom support your decisions and think the best thing to do is disown their children. If you ever need advice, support, 
or someone to talk to you are always welcome to talk to me. For what it's worth I think you're very brave to stand up for yourself and your values like that. I'm sorry your relatives can't see it that way. To this day I tried to kill myself at least three times. I thought this fight will MKE me suicidal again but it didn't. It feels good to stand up for yourself, like I still have a purpose. I hope you do finish college, find a job, and do indeed FCK off from their house. That tactic of your only doing this because you want men's attention hit too close to home for me and is highly unfair to you. Also, I read this somewhere and it has helped me a lot to make decisions in my life, sometimes. To do what is best for yourself and to live a happy life, you're gonna have to disappoint your parents a little bit. And I think for you, it'll be a lot, but they are being very controlling. There will be lots of guilt tripping so be prepared for it and don't fall for it. Hi another Muslim here. From what I've learned in my life about Islam nobody can force you to wear a hijab if you don't want to. It's entirely your decision and yours only. Not your father, mother, husband or anyone can force you to do that. Suggestions maybe but forcing that's a big no. My mom doesn't wear a hijab once my uncle told her that she has to wear a hijab or she'll make her husband and son go to hell. I saw Reddit that I told him he has no right and say in that nor my father or I. Like like hijab marriage is also your choice you choose who you wanna marry your parents can suggest but it's your decision if you wanna marry them or not. Islam is a simple religion but a lot of different cultures has made it complicated. My relatives are so strict like that. It is hard but I just want to live as how I want. You should not wear hijab due to societal pressure. It is against Quran to force religion on other people. I am coming from a country in which women are forced to wear hijab by their families. Any of them accept it first then says fuck it and open their headscarves. You should do whatever you feel is right. You are an adult. Your mother or your sister cannot force you to do something. Open your hair and if they say anything, tell them fuck off. You only live one life and you should not live it under the shadow of your sister and mother. I saw many of my friends go through tear but their families didn't react the way mine did. It's goose for them too. I hope they accept me sooner or later. Don't want to hurt them. I, 25M, was suspicious, snooped, and left my girlfriend, 22F. What do I do now? I, 25M, was with my girlfriend, 22F, from June until several weeks ago. She was super awesome, but also, in my view, super shady. I blindsided her pretty hard by leaving her. Sorry in advance for the novel but I think the details are important. We met on Tinder and hit it off immediately as we shared lots of common interests, maybe more than anyone else I've ever met. We actually matched while she was visiting a friend in the city where I live, but she was living in a college town about 100 miles away. A good first two weeks of knowing each other was from Tinder messages and texts only. Finally went and met up with her in real life and she was far more awesome than I expected. Anyways, I was taking online summer classes at my university and she was unemployed due to COVID, so even though she technically lived 100 plus miles away she basically lived with me for most of the summer, lying to her parents about where she was. Fast forward to the autumn semester, and we go from living with each other for two to three weeks straight per month to seeing each other for one to three days a couple of times per month. It was around this time a family friend of hers, basically her godmother, died. Though she faced it really bravely at first, it came to consume her and she quickly became depressed, anxious and her eating disorder got worse. A week or so after the funeral, I didn't go and she was totally fine with that, I came to visit her and she was acting funny. We talked and she expressed how she'd been feeling very depressed given the death and that she missed me often but that was it. I took her word for it and tried to do my best to be there for her and suspected nothing. The next day, however, we were doing homework together and were talking about a painting she was studying for class. I'm a musician and she was an art student so it was fun to discuss art slash music. Soon after, she left to go to work and while she was gone I noticed her laptop was open. I thought it might be fun to look at the pieces she was studying for class and talk to her about them when she got home. Instead, 
I noticed her messenger app, the one for sending iMessages on your computer, sitting next to her notes. Front and center were texts to her friend about how she wished I wasn't there, how I wish he would just teleport away, and her friend asking her how's the breakup going, with my girlfriend replying not good. I was appalled. I knew coming to visit her that she hadn't been doing great, but even being there in person I had no inkling that she wanted to break up. She totally hid that from me. I did the wrong thing and with her computer open, I kept snooping. She'd expressed to the same friend as above once that she didn't love me the same way as she loved her ex. After coming with me to meet my parents, she excitedly texted her friend about how wealthy my parents are. I present fairly middle class myself as that's how I grew up. But my parents do well for themselves now. I found texts to a guy friend several months into our relationship where my girlfriend described me as the boy I'm fucking and my friend. She sent pictures of herself to her guy friend that I took of her while omitting to send a single picture of me and her together. Meanwhile, this guy friend, which I only heard about once or twice, would occasionally send her texts about how horny he was or about how many times he jacked off that day. In her texts. She would always brush him off but it made me feel so gross that my girlfriend was even entertaining this guy with conversations about those things when I knew nothing about him from her end. She eventually got back from work and I decided the best thing for both of us was to not bring up the snooping I'd done. I knew it was incredibly wrong to spy but I felt I'd learned important things that would determine my moves forward. Throughout that night continued to act as normal as she had been when I arrived. The next morning I packed up early and told her I felt she didn't want me around, as I had found out from the texts to her friend, but she vehemently denied it. We eventually agreed to break up and my decision to leave her and leave town was devastating to her. Almost immediately after I'd gotten home she started texting me again. After about a week or so of awkward back and forth we decided to give it another go. She told me that our relationship was the only healthy one she'd ever been in and that she loved me earnestly. She was busy with school and work. We didn't visit each other for another month, but when we finally saw each other again it truly felt like we were working towards the level of trust and intimacy we used to have. Trouble began again for me when she would talk in her sleep. Several times while we were sleeping she would roll over and call me by another guy's name, or be talking to other guys by name in her dreams. I chalked it up to the randomness of the subconscious and ignored it. We didn't see each other again until just before Christmas when she came to visit for my birthday. Day. Due to Covid, there wasn't much to do besides hanging out at home, but it was alright. Trouble struck again on the final day she was visiting, which happened to be my birthday. I had been woken up the night before by her rolling over, putting her arm around me, and saying I love you, insert another guy's name here backslash, so I started the day pretty sad slash mad. She also refused to wake up and slept until nearly 1 pm. She told me she was going to bake me a cake the day before but decided not to, had nothing planned, and I ended up buying us a nice lunch with my own money. To top it all off she decided she was not going to spend the night as she'd planned 3 to 4 weeks earlier, but instead left her day early. I ended up spending most of my birthday with her sitting on the couch and the entire evening alone as she left early. I'm not backslash an needy person when it comes to birthdays slash presents slash surprises but the extremely low level of effort combined with being called another guy's name in bed the night before left me sad, mad, and more suspicious than ever. I went through Christmas time feeling pretty dejected about the whole relationship, but it didn't cost me much more than an hour a day of texting slash phone calls so I just went with it. The last straw for me was her not texting me all evening one Friday in early January. Finally got a tipsy text from her late that night that she'd been out getting coffee and drinks with one of her guy friends she hadn't seen in months. Though she worked 50 to 60 hours per week and had only seen me three times in the past 15 weeks, she had the afternoon and evening off and decided not to spend it with me. I would never ask ASO to distance themselves from seeing their friends. That's abusive. But when she said I wish I could have been grabbing a drink with you when there seemed no intention of that, I snapped. It was 
was the disingenuous move that broke the camel's back for me. The next day I told her about my reservations about our relationship and how I felt like she stopped caring and wasn't being completely honest about her lingering emotions for her exes. I asked her about the guy she called me in her sleep the night before my birthday and she told me she had no idea who he was. Five minutes looking at social media and Venmo, yeah I know, it was creepy, and I knew she was flat out lying. He was her ex slash FWB a month or two before we met. I knew at that point I couldn't go on anymore. I'd never expect a girlfriend of mine to give me the rundown on their entire past, but don't lie to me. I took her completely by surprise that I decided to leave for good and she ended up getting pretty angry at me for breaking up. I'm several weeks single at this point and don't feel great, but I'm doing alright. Sucks cause this girl was incredibly perfect for me in a number of ways that are very important to me. On the other hand, a great deal of the problems I had with the relationship originated from my suspicion of her and snooping through social media, Venmo, and on her computer once several months ago. In the end, I think I did the right thing for myself but confronting the fact that my doubts seemed to be rooted in my own insecurity and in ability to trust has had me wondering how to grow and move forward. My, M29, colleague, F35ish, tried to recruit me and my GF, F30, to a cult. How do I deal with this on Monday morning? So basically, my colleague invited me to wellness course at the weekend. Thought it would be a nice chance to get to know her outside of work. The course was online. I'm very new to the job and given that it's all remote work, it's been hard to get to know people. Absolutely no interest in her romantically, I actually had my GF take part in the course as well. Anyway, the master of the course immediately started using manipulative tactics on all the attendees. It has all the signs of being a cult. I've no doubt about it. I walked out after 45 minutes but my GF stayed on the chat. My GF was keen to see if she could learn anything on mindfulness and given we paid a lot for the workshop, she wanted to get her money worth. I listened in and it was heartbreaking to hear them insult and humiliate my GF, while giving her just enough praise to keep her interested. Anytime she tried to leave, they would go on a 10 minutes talk about how she wasn't living a full live but she could if she took part in their weekly classes. We didn't bite, don't worry. I have to chat with my colleague tomorrow. How should I approach this? She'll want to know why I didn't stick out the whole session and if I have any feedback. Should I be truthful? and say what I think? Should I make up an excuse so we avoid any conflict? Should I tell her she's in a cult? Any advice welcome.